During the early 1970s, Ursula Dudziak established herself as one of Europe's most fiery and acrobatic jazz vocalists. And after her and her husband, Michael Urbaniak, migrated to the United States, they made numerous jazz funk recordings. And in 1975, she released her first solo album proper, simply titled Ursula. And from that album, the track Call Me Monday. those just creamy, blurry tones. Like these like half steps with like major sevenths thrown in and just these kind of blurry instruments and, and bending tones and such. that kind of dreamy mid-70s vibe, that creamy production. You can just imagine like the Super 8 film footage that may exist of this. Like... <laughs> like orgasmic sighing breathy vocalizing wordless and all let's see so far what have we got here um we have got uh harold ivory williams on electric piano fender most definitely we've got uh joe caro and reggie lucas are both credited with guitar on this album ursula dudziak um in addition to vocals uh, percussion and synthesizer, and her husband, Michael Urbaniak, responsible for arrangements and the Lyricon, this um, electric woodwind that's very uh, unique to like jazz, jazz funk re recordings from this time period, particularly like, like American ones. <laughs> She's just having orgasm after orgasm under this like strobe lit, like mirror ball dance floor, like in the heat of the night, you know, mid 70s. <laughs> Or heck, it could be out like in, in under the the moonlit starry night, like outside al fresco, you know, half ha half disrobed, you know, in that hedonistic era. <laughs> responsible for that rip roar, or that oozing, simmering, just scaling solo. Joe uh, Caro, one of the guitarists on here, was only 19 when this album was recorded. Uh, wow. Um, I'm going to kind of put my money on 
Well, Reggie Lucas was only 22 when this album was recorded. Yeah, Reggie Lucas, around the same time, uh, recorded his solo album, Survival Themes, which came out a few years after it was recorded. It came out in East Wind, the Japanese. Actually, the, the date of that is, seems to differ between every uh, site that I look at. He, um, I think, had notched up quite a few credits at this point. He had played on albums by Norman... Connors, Carlos Garnett, Miles Davis even, yeah, um, appeared on Get Up With It, and Gary Bartz and Lonnie Liston-Smith, um, and the same year as, as Urzla appeared on an album by uh, Shunzo Ono, I think I'm going to lean toward him as the guy responsible. <laughs> her voice as an instrument I mean purely like just and soloing scaling just doing all kinds of acrobatics with it just showing her her octave range and her ability to just you know flutter it about <laughs> And I haven't even said anything yet about these head-spinning drum rolls, which, well, the the drumming of Gerald Brown, who has been putting in rolls all, all around, just um, laying out all kinds of, like, tom spray, but also, and then alternating between these kind of, like, funky passages with these kind of, like, sliding rhythms, like we just heard in that one section. Gerald Brown, what did, what did he done, like, uh, in and around this time? Um, 24 years old at the time. Oh yeah, he was in that duo. That's something I need to listen to a bit more. The, yeah, the John Lee, Jerry Brown albums. Yeah, that, that duo. Yeah, I've worked through one of their albums. I, I need to, that's something I, I uh, need to just bone up on a little bit more though. And had played um, huh, going back to age 15 supposedly had played on a Roland Kirk album. Yeah, as a teenager was 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 back in, and then uh, played on albums by the Chris Hines combination, a really good uh, a Dutch jazz rock ensemble. Uh, Charlie Mariano was another credit preceding um, Ursula. So, boy wonder, yeah. <laughs> Like what what I could only I guess describe as like a vocal glissando going way down to those low notes, kind of getting quieter and quieter, and just as that bass kind of took over, that blurring, kind of dreamy bass. Um, bass on this album played by Basil Farrington, uh, and um, he was in Matum, I guess the Matum's band, actual like like soul funk band, um, Matum the uh, this. The spiritual jazz percussionist who switched over to soul funk at the turn of the 80s. Oh, and he played on that Vitamin E record from 1977 and appeared on um, at least one other, oh, appeared on, uh, yeah, one other, no, two other Michael Urbaniak albums. So he's probably heard on that, that Michael Urbaniak uh, video I did a few months ago. I may have even mentioned him, I can't remember. Um, and appeared on Roberta Flack's Blue Lights in the Basement album. Yeah, good. Uh, kind of like soul pop album 
and Phyllis Simons, You Know How to Love Me, and Stephanie Mills. Oh, uh, yeah, notching up credits with some of the, the best of, of, like, soul funk of the turn of the 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that just velvety tone of that bass. Uh, Ursula Dudziak, uh, Call Me Monday, Monday from her 1975 uh, debut solo album, Ursula. Yeah, just everything. Just going off on all these like fluttering, high end vocal acrobatics and highs, you know, and going back down and just these alternating between these like blurry, hazy, grainy mid 70s phantasmagorical tones of instrumentation and and then and then getting into some more like funky sections here and there uh just mid-70s bliss yeah um let's hear another track from the album mosquito bite <laughs> Right there, we're getting quite the Moog solo from Harold Ivory Williams, who was, oh, uh, I guess kind of an elder, a session elder at age 26 at the time. Uh, and just um, leading up to, right around this time, he had played on several titles by Miles Davis. He had appeared on On the Corner and Big Fun. And uh, the self-titled uh, 1973 album by MFSB, and had also worked with uh, John Lee, Jerry Brown on their duo recordings and would appear on a few more Urbaniac, Dudziak records in the years to come. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like grooving around in, in E minor right now. Almost like flangy. Okay, 
whatever effects were going into like make that guitar tone make it just ooze like that and simmer and uh, over all those scaly but like just the the alternation between like the, those sustained notes and then a few kind of like faster licks and then just her uh, vocal acrobats just like uh, spiraling erupting right out of that solo and just taking command and just with those like orgasmic sighs and leaps and all and <sighs> that certain sound effect that sounds kind of like the like the like there's like they're kind of like the, in the sort of air chamber that's like turning around there, there's it, it, it seems to like 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 it kind of like uh slowly kind of get more trebly and then kind of like less trebly there, there's a certain kind of like trebly kind of like flange quality that's like kind of coming in and out and I, I I can't quite put my there's a certain effect that's going on <laughs> like flange drums or something like giving that kind that kind of like airy uh like like reverb on, on the hits somehow <laughs> like buzzing uh instrument that that that's doubling up on her vocal melody uh that they, she's doing it at like a lower octave it's going like <laughs> Mosquito Bite by Ursula Dudziak from her 1975 debut solo album, Ursula, released on Arista, recorded with her husband, Michael Urbaniak. Um, the track um, written by Ursula, and um, the one before it, Call Me Monday, also credited as a Ursula composition. Um, with arrangements by Michael Urbaniak, who uh, plays uh, Lyricon on the album, and a host of talent that I've, I've named them all. Uh, yeah, just great, just head spinning, drumming, just pulverizing things as she just kind of takes command and just darts all around like her multi-octave range and with like orgasmic, exuberant, abandon and yet control at the same time um of her tone and everything and uh yeah great creamy blurry bendy smooth bass work and keyboards you know ablaze and oozing guitar tones just oh singing and simmering right out and of different bars and 
Uh, Mid-70s bliss. Take me there. I want to stay there. Yeah. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Ursula Dudziak and her husband Michael Urbaniak, see the directory of albums by Polish artists linked in the description below. Well, it's actually a directory of albums by East by artists from the former Eastern Bloc. Um, but Poland's in that. And um, over um, 650 titles strong, I believe, currently. Yeah, actually one of my most popular directories. Um, there's a lot of diverse talent from uh, the former Eastern Bloc nations, like especially like Poland, especially, as well as like Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary. Uh, yeah. And uh, for Red Hot Tracks and Tasty Purples from this album, um, and Ursula's uh, next album from 1977, um, equally as strong, uh, Midnight Rain, and then a few others after that, Future Talk, Erla, and her husband's great, vast catalog, very prolific from like 1974 uh, to like 1981, thereabouts. Um, and... Uh, like-minded artists from that region of the world. Um, like and subscribe and follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about these two tracks we just heard, the vocal performance, her vocal range, the octaves, and her acrobatics and all, um, as well as the, the soloing, which instrumental section stood out to you, who had the best break in the track, the best, you know, time in the spotlight. Uh, the mood that these songs created, the heady aura of it all, the intensity, what kind of impact did it have on you emotionally, on, on what kind of imagination, dignance did it conjure up in your head? Yeah. And until, <coughs> and until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air-travel trimaximalist, signing off.